Hey everyone and welcome back to another Tuesday tip where in this video we're going to be talking about what I think is the most simple and easy to use video editor for iPhone and that is Splice Video Editor and Maker. Splice recently has come out with a totally new update which overhauls the entire app which I have been using for probably six years now to edit all of my videos that I post on Instagram and with that I thought it would be a perfect time to update my overview video on this app and go over the entire new app and go over everything that you need to know to use it so with that let's click open here from the app store and it brings you into splice and this is what you're going to see once you open it for the first time and go through the informational pages that come up first as you can see here i've already got a project started but for the sake of this video let's press the plus sign button and start a new project and here we're greeted with a screen that shows all of the videos and photos in our camera roll and up here in the center you can touch where it says camera roll and you have access to all of the albums on your device so we're going to go back to the camera roll and i'm going to select these two videos right here and then select next so you'll obviously pick your videos and push next now here is the first difference between the previous version of this app we are greeted with a title which we can name ourselves as well as the aspect ratio before there were a lot more settings than this so you can select portrait square or landscape I'm going to assume that we're going to use this on Instagram, so I'm going to choose square and we're going to click create. Splice is going to load the media and we are greeted with the editor. The top left corner, we've got an X to close out of the project. We'll jump right back in here. We move over to the right and we've got the settings for the project, which is just our aspect ratio and our project name. We've also got the share button right beside that then we can move down into actually using the timeline itself you just scrub through here you can zoom in and out on it with two fingers pinching to zoom very nice functionality there and it's very helpful to edit the length of your clip this is also part of the timeline function and it's not within the rest of it you use the end and the beginning of the clip itself press and hold as close as you can to the line and you'll see that we edit the length of the clip by trimming it that way we've also got the option to add fades in here so we can choose right in between it highlights in blue and you'll see the type it's got a few different types of transitions and fades as well as a random button automatically it chooses none for you and when you do select a transition for example the cross fade you can also change the duration from 0.1 seconds all the way up to 0.9 seconds we're going to get rid of that transition here and move forward so as you can see we have a new arrow up in the top left corner this is our undo and redo buttons so with that it gives us icons that shows us what we did and this is a huge update that i wish we would have had for years i don't know if there's a limit to how many of these we will see because it goes all the way back to the creation of the project we can even go forward again and this is just an amazing function to have in this app and i'm so glad that it has it and also tells us what we did exactly even with the numbers I love this function. You can organize your clips by pressing and holding on one, just like in the previous version of the app. And to delete one, you can drag it down to the trash can at the bottom and it will delete it. So from there, we can move on to talking about this row of icons, what they mean, what they do, as well as the video editing functions and that row of icons that come up whenever you select video, audio, or text. And in here, we've got a whole bunch of different tabs at the bottom for media, music, title, sound effects, voice, and text. And let's run through these right now. The first one is media. When you press media, it's just going to bring up the exact same screen we were just on. So you could select any videos that you might want to bring in or pictures into the project. I'm gonna click cancel. And from here, we'll move over to music. 
music is the same as in the old version of the app. You've got lots of different options here, as well as the option to press on your iTunes and pick songs that are actually on your phone already. I'm gonna click cancel. Don't wanna add music this time. Third in the row is the title function, which we can press to add a title to the video. It's going to automatically add some blank space of video to the screen, as well as our text element. With this blank space, you can change the color to any one of these options here. So we're just going to pick this nice green one. We can also duplicate it, which will just make a copy. And then we can delete, which we're going to do on our duplicate. Next, we can double tap the screen to edit, or we can push the edit button down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna double tap and just call it title. Then we're gonna press the check mark to accept the changes. And from here, we've got all of these different title options at the bottom. So we can change the color of the title as well. Let's make that black. We can change the font. And there are a ton of fonts in here for you to choose from. I'm going to choose that one. We can change the background color again, except this time we're changing just the background color of the text. We can also affect the opacity of this background with this slider here. We can change the alignment of the text to left, centered, or actually, it looks like it's not doing a ton right now. I haven't actually used this function yet, so let's add some more stuff here and see if we can get it to change. Title video. Now let's try it. So it actually looks like this might be a buggy function of the video. Either way, let's keep it centered for now. And this is actually a perfect time to say that there are bugs in working with this app. They just updated it. They had another update that came out today or yesterday. And from here, there's just there's going to be small things that come up, which you can report to them in the App Store. You can find their contact information and go about it that way. So from here, we can go to the Opacity button which will allow us to change the opacity of the entire title, including the background. And then this fade button here, which I haven't quite figured out what it does yet. It doesn't fade in or fade out the title. So I'm not sure if that's a bug either, but it's there. And in the future, I'm sure we will find out what it does. The functionality is there for you guys to learn about it in future updates when you're watching this. We also have another duplicate function, so we can press duplicate, and this will also make another duplicate, but this time of the title. And to interchange between editing the different titles on the screen, we can press the little T right here that is below the title. And you can see that that's allowing us to switch back and forth between the two. I'm going to delete this copy up here, and if we want to get rid of everything here, all we have to do is press the title by pressing the little T and then press delete, press the background and press delete. It's that simple. And the only difference between the title function and the function of the text that we're about to see within this is that it adds that blank space of video in the beginning. So after that, we've got sound effects. There's tons of different sound effects on the app already. Then we've got voice, which is going to record voice over for the video. So the phone is recording right now, let's stop. So we've got a voice recording, which we can change the volume, speed, as well as changing the audio recording. We can duplicate it as well, or we can delete it, which I'm going to do right now. From there, we've got the text function. So this just does the exact same thing, but without automatically inserting that blank space of video. So we've got our title here or our text because it's technically not a title in the app. And to move these around, all you have to do is press and hold and you can move these to any point of the video. You can adjust their starting and ending points. This is something that a ton of people asked about in my previous video about how you work with text in this app and it is very simple to do now. And with this text, it has the exact same set of options because it is exactly the same. So I'm going to delete this text here 
and now we can press on the video itself. And with that, we've got a whole bunch of options that come up for editing the video. We can edit the volume and fade it in and out so we can use the slider as well as the buttons to fade in and out. The highlight in blue means that they are on. We can change the speed of the clip right here. We can go all the way from 10 times, speeding it up 10 times, to 0.1 times. And there's a forced close of the app, which like I said, there are bugs with this app. And while we're waiting on the app to start back up here, I will say that I have had some issues in editing with this app since the update because we're only a week past the original date of them updating with this huge overhaul. There's just going to be issues like this and we need to work through them. And I'm sure by the time you're watching this video in the future, these updates will have been worked through and fixed in subsequent updates. Moving forward, let's go back to our video options. And from here, we can change the speed, like I said. Moving on, we can change filters, which there are also a ton of in this app. And then, in addition to this, we also have adjustments to the video. This is a huge update, which I am so glad that they added. We can adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, temperature, and hue of the video. This is a first for anything like this that I have heard of in a free app for iPhone. I have been waiting for something like this forever. So let's not do that on this one, but we can change it on this one. Let's adjust the brightness. Let's make it a little bit brighter. Saturation, obviously we're going a little overboard here. And also the sharpness because this clip was shot in a lower quality. There we go. We've got adjustments. After the adjustments, we have the ability to crop still, which is also very easy to do. And now they've given us some buttons for fitting and filling the screen. So if you're working with a video that doesn't match the aspect ratio of your project, you can fit it onto the screen in its original format. I want the fill option here and you can see the crop lines on the screen. And just like in the previous version of the app, you use two fingers to edit things and crop. We can also rotate by rotating two fingers. And the cool thing here is that it gives you a center guide. So if you get it centered perfectly, we can see the cross on the screen that's telling us that it's exactly in the center. Or we can keep it centered vertically, or we can keep it centered horizontally right here just like this i may have said those backwards but that's okay so we can zoom in here and another way that we can get to this crop function is just by tapping on the screen twice it automatically brings up the crop function and from here let's move over to the transform options we've got the ability to flip vertically we can flip horizontally and we can rotate at 90 degree increments, both directions. This is another huge thing that did not previously exist with iPhone video editing apps on the free side of things. From there, we can go to the animate function. This is something that I loved in the previous version but forgot to cover in the video or just didn't know what it meant. So we can enable the Ken Burns effect which is basically keyframing in your video. So you can select the start frame. We're gonna zoom way in. And then you can select the end frame, which we can zoom out a little bit for. And what it's going to do is automatically go from this frame to this frame within our video. So as you can see, it's zooming out with the video. You can do this with anything you want. You can rotate, you can zoom in super far. It is a very valuable function to have and know how to use. From there, we can change the background. So if we zoom, if we zoom out to where we have a background, we change the background, we can see that it is green now. And after that, we have the split function. This is where slow motion comes into play. So let's say that we want to add slow motion to this clip and we wanna add it from this starting point right about here 
to this ending point. All we have to do, which is so much easier than previous versions of this app, is get to the starting point, push split, which automatically splits it into two different parts. Then we go to the end point, push split again, and now it automatically selects our split portion. We can go back up to speed and slow it down. Now, instead of having to figure out things with numbers, it's just automatic and easy. So let's play it. Boom. Easy slow motion that looks really good and is super intuitive to use. After that in the project, the only other thing we have down here is the delete function, and that does it for all of the controls of the video. So now once your video is done, all you have to do is press the share button in the top corner. You can share it or you can save it. I'm going to save and it's going to export the video automatically. Before we had options for quality, I'm assuming it just exports at the highest quality now. We can leave a review if we want to. I'm going to push no thanks. We can push share if we want to. And it's going to automatically export it again. But once it's done, it's going to bring up share options, just like whenever you're sharing from your Photos app. So I'm gonna push cancel, push done. Our video is done. And that's gonna do it for this tutorial. I hope that you guys found it useful. And if you have any issues with this app currently when you're watching it, just report them to the developers. And you can also leave a comment on this video and I will let you know how I got around the problem that you're having because I most likely have encountered it using this app every single day. And I will do so as soon as I possibly can. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. Subscribe if you're new and you might enjoy BMX content because I know that this video is going to bring in a lot of non-BMX people. I think you'll like my videos and I have other tips and tricks videos for apps just like this one for editing videos on iPhone. I wanna thank you guys for being here and watching and we'll see you hopefully next time in another video. Goodbye.